Question nine is probably the tougher, toughest of the questions on this worksheet because there's actually an extra step. So even though that's not, it's not the last question on here, it's probably tough. Let's still practice our givens and unknowns. We have 44 meters per second. Let's write that down. We have 22 meters per second. Let's write that down as well. We have 11 seconds. Okay, listing these out, we know that we have 44 meters per second. Meters per second means velocity. Meters per second, again, that means velocity as, as well. Okay, this is one question where you would have to kind of figure out which one's initial, which one's final. We start with 44, we end with 22, so 44 is initial, 22 is final. Seconds is time. Now, if you changed velocities in time, you had acceleration. There is no acceleration listed, so that is really your first step. Step number one, you need to figure out acceleration. Okay, so let's treat that as a separate problem here. VF, VI, A, and T. Do we have a time in our list of givens? Yes, we do. Do we have X or D in my list of givens? No, we do not. Because there's time, the second equation, Vf squared, is not useful. Okay? And the because there's a no x or d in my list of givens, the big ugly is not useful. The only equation useful is the first one. Vf is equal to vi plus at. We move our variables around. Yes, because we need acceleration, so we subtract vi from both sides. All right, we have VF minus VI is equal to AT. Divide both sides by A. Whoops, I'm sorry. Divide both sides by T. I'm probably rushing it like you should not. Divide both sides by T. Yoink. The T is gone. So now, and I'll even erase it. Hey, there we go. There's my new equation. VF minus VI divided by t is going to equal a. Plug and chug, and you get an acceleration of negative 2. You slow down, so you have an acceleration of negative 2. All right. Now that we have acceleration, our next unknown is what we're really looking for. What is displacement? Okay. Now, I'm going to write displacement equals question mark except displacement could also be final position why because if I travel you know a certain distance my displacement is how far I traveled but it can also be if I say my initial position is zero my displacement is also my final position where I end up so that is important alright now you ask yourself those two questions again to pick the equation. Two questions. That's supposed to be a Q. Whoops. Okay, first, is there time? Yes, there is. There is time. There we go. Okay, is there XF slash D? And yes to that as well. So that shows us that if there's time, the second equation of the VF squared is not useful. If there's xf slash d, even though that is by far the worst time I've ever written vf squared or x squared or xf slash d, that means that the last equation, the big ugly, is what you need to use. So I write the big ugly equation: xf equals xi plus vi times t plus one half at squared. Okay. Now, Mr. Spudik, you don't give us initial position. If I don't ask for or give you the initial position, that means I don't care about the initial position because we're going to start from zero. So that is gone. Next up, initial velocity is 44. So I'll say 44 time 11 plus 1 half acceleration. We just said it was negative 2 times the time squared, 11 squared. Now, this is a very important thing that people will make a mistake of. 
you're only squaring the 11. You are not squaring this whole number. Just square the 11. All right, so we plug everything in, and our answer should be 360 meters, and we say going south, but I don't really care too much about that. There you go.